Hello and welcome to the Nerd in Motion. I just thought I'd do a sort of recap of yesterday and uh, my thoughts on everything that sort of happened and what I think about what's going on. I've already done one video and I got so passionate about it I ended up <laughs> re-watching it and thought, I can't really put that out. Um, I, I'll just break it down. First, I'll make a point. So, I've live streamed the Canadian truckers by accident and and that's kind of opened my eyes to what's going on and then I did the convoy to the border a few weeks ago um, and that there were a lot of similarities between that and the other one although they were entirely different in their conception and what they were trying to do, trying to do and now we've got the farmers in Europe protesting that's now rolled into Wales and no doubt it won't be long before they'll have a go at Scotland, I'm sure. You'll be on the list, if it's not already happening. I mean, they've attacked... Anyway, I'm going off subject, let's make this point. There is the same things happening every single time. So, it's always, um, it's always the same. They... I'm saying they, I'm saying the people that are against the protest. It's always the same pattern. So the thing that nine times out of ten the group are protesting about makes a lot of sense and is common sense. But the way it's put upon the people is like it's a half truth, half lie, however which way you want to look at it. It's, hey, this is going to be really good for you. And, you know, you should do that because that's the right thing to do. But the undertone of it is nearly every time it takes something away from you, there's some sort of degradation of uh, what happens to your life and they gain a little bit more control over what you do and what you say. That is the same thing on all of the protests. Absolutely all of them. The issue then becomes how do we stop these people from protesting and they use the same tactics so normally it's the media rolls out salts in that these are bad people because they don't want this nice thing that we're all trying to do for you as the government because we're good people you know those guys that are politicians that probably spent most of their childhood with their underpants pulled over their heads because they were so weak who are now in power and they are there self-serving and lining their own pockets at everybody else's expense so that's one part of the argument so then it comes out it's in the news they make it sound like that and then if the if it's still looking like, oh, you know what, these people really are going to protest, well, let's up the ante a little bit more, and then the name-calling starts, and we roll out the same words, extremists, racists, Nazis, um, right -wing, extreme right-wingers. Uh, all these things, just it's just like, they just get rolled off the tongue every single time. Oh, they're this, they're that. It's the same. And every one of the, the protests I've seen before, it's exactly the same things that are said. And the problem is with that, I think it's got to the point where you say it so much that nobody's listening to you anymore. Which then, when those actual people that are in those groups, they can go, they can go under the radar. Because you've said it so much, it becomes the norm. And nobody takes any notice. And that's, that's really dangerous. Anyway, so that's the first thing. So we, I went there. Uh, I drove for uh, um, hundreds of miles. Uh, I think I did nine and a half hours of driving yesterday. Um, we, <clears throat> and I had some help from a guy called Luke John, who's very much like me as well, where I, I wouldn't say I'm right wing, I wouldn't say I'm left wing, I'm right in the middle. I think there's elements of both, and I think you need balance otherwise um it all goes to pot otherwise you have incredibly selfish rich people or you have absolute poverty on the other side uh with with dictatorship and in fact there's dictatorship on both ends the the far end of both political views is exactly the same so 
somewhere in the middle is where we should be. Caring, looking after people, making sure that as society we do, we do the best for one another, respecting people's religions, respecting their beliefs, respecting what they want to do as long as they're not harming anybody else. Don't have any issues with those things. But this is not about that. This is about some very, very rich, powerful people who want to have control of everything. And they're selling us this idea and they're using good people who actually have, you know, they want the best for people. They're using those people to push an agenda in. And those people that are actually kind, well-thinking um, people will be the first that they'll stitch up. You just know that that's how it goes. Um, and the this is not... This is not a left-right thing. This is an act. That's what they want us to do. They want to divide us. Because if we unified in this issue, then their stuff, they won't get their own way. And they do it through gradualism. But at the moment, what they're trying to do, I guess they're, they're bombarding us with so much stuff that they're hoping that just stuff flies under the radar. But do we really... <laughs> like Net Zero in the UK hey, we should be looking after our environment. We should be looking after what we've got. Why not? Why are we not pushing for recycling cars more and buying second-hand parts, refurbished parts? Why are we not keeping older cars like this running for longer and keeping them efficient and clean and, and, and making sure that they run well? And this car has already paid its carbon tax, and yet, you want me to go and buy an EV that's six times as bad for the environment to produce than making one car that's a petrol engine. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then tying all of that to politics in itself is frustrating. Um, and now the farmers are... Oh, this is going to be really good for you, farmers. We're going to make you grow some wild flowers. And we're going to make you plant some trees. Right, okay. Well, that I don't think anybody's against that. Well, that's fine, as long as we're meeting our food quotas. Now, I don't know about you, but I see things missing in the supermarket quite often that we don't have a stock of. And I don't remember it being like that, but apparently there's certain things that are really hard to get get hold of now that we couldn't get hold of before. And yeah, we might have to wait for some stuff seasonally. So let's kind of just rewind a little bit. If we start taking more of the land away from farming and growing trees and wild flowers, then we are probably going to run out of food. So then what? And then 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 what do we do? What do we just cut those trees back down? What about the wildlife that then has gone back into those habitats? And then there's I'm sure I put money on it, there'll be like some wild, like crazy newt that has just come back from extinction, and then that land can definitely never ever be farming land again. And then that farmer has completely lost that land. That's I mean, I don't know if that's correct, but that's my thoughts. Um, knowing how the, the government works and, and people in power, it always seems to be like there's always a, a, a way around it. I could tell you a story about something that happened just on a council level that is absolutely pure evil. Absolutely evil. Uh, but I'm not going to start talking about it because if I do, I'll get very very upset. Um We've got to a position with farmers where... Well, we've got to a position where they're now messing with our food. They want to grow the meat. They want to... They want farm... Like, modern ways of producing uh, green food, shall we say. Um, and that food won't be as good quality. There's no way. It won't be as nutritious. You've only got to look at food now, and it's not as good as when I was a kid. The only thing that is better is the amount of additives that uh, we had in the 80s <laughs> um, and the killer c chemicals that were in there have kind of been reduced. But the the problem that we've got now, I mean, there's just food that you eat now and you just think, hey, this doesn't taste as good. Um, 
but we still need we need farmers we need we i don't want to be eating factory produced food like that i just really don't there's a lot of processed food anyway but when you're all food and farming becomes owned by the government and then you know that's tied up with tech that's tied up with big pharma as in pharmaceuticals it's tied up with your your digital ids that they're desperate to get us all on digital ids because then they can have our digital id will then become our digital passport that will become our our bank account will be in, uh, on it and our um everything everything or oh you won't have to do a tax return oh, don't worry about that because we'll do it we'll do it for you um they'll do it oh yeah it's going to be awesome for you because hey all your health care will be covered and then they'll be like oh we want to attach your social media media and, and what you 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 go and look at on on uh, websites we're going to attach that and then your credit score will be attached to that as well and then all of a sudden you disagree with something that whoever gets in power decides to do and oh you haven't got any money. Oh, you get in your car, it won't start because it's connected to the internet. You said something bad. Oh, you work. The government will contact your work and say, hey, you need to stop working now. That, you know, all that kind of stuff is 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 what's coming. That is, it, they want absolute control under the guise of utopia, which it won't be. It might be, it might be peaceful in some respects if you toe the line, but... There, there'll be so many more issues and you will not have freedom and you will not have your faith. They'll take it all away. It'll all be government permissed stuff and you only got to look at China and the way that country is and there's, the Chinese people are lovely. They're good people but their government sucks. It's awful and the stuff that they do to their own people is disgusting. Um, it, it really is. And then we look at the scary bit like New Zealand, Australia, Canada. We all have the same parliament. And you've got somebody like Trudeau in power who is undoubtedly, if he could get his own way, stay in power and be a dictator, he would 100%. There's no doubt. And the scary bit is, if we get something like that happen here in the UK, we could be as equally stuffed. Look at this Welsh Prime Minister. He is a dictator. I don't care what anybody says. His behaviour, the fact that he's upset a bunch of people and then done a runner is just textbook Trudeau. I, in fact, I'm going to call it the Trudeau in politics. So it, if somebody, if a politician is pulling a Trudeau, what he's doing is he's upset the people. They're coming to protest. So he... He just does a runner. He hides. Uh, you know, th that clown just went and, and went to Brussels with all of his other mates sucking up. The guy is... Yeah, I mean, COVID came along. He builds a shed in his back garden and goes and hides in it. That, that kind of isn't normal for somebody who's meant to be a leader of a country. I'm just putting that out there. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I feel about the whole thing. And I think... You know, you need to put your kind of left-right politics away and unite. And I will say to the farmers, you need to make sure you're united and not infighting because that's what they'll do to try and pull you apart. Watch your WhatsApp groups. Watch your uh, uh, your face Facebook group isn't tight enough. You need to make sure that you, you've got, you know, a net over that door of who you let in. Be careful because there will be people that will come into those groups and their sole purpose is to divide you, cause trouble, to troll you, to um, basically get in fighting and they will be the first that will run and screenshot everything, report it, get get you guys in trouble with the police, they'll get you in trouble with, uh, well they'll, they'll put stuff out to the newspapers that you know, makes you sound terrible when, you know, it's just stuff that has been said out of context. Just be diligent and try and stay unified. Obviously, there's very different people with very different 
levels of uh, being passionate. You know, some of you guys, it might not affect you that much. You might have absolutely loads and loads of land and you can't farm half of it anyway. So it won't make a, a big difference. There's other other ones where that's going to be a huge chunk and a massive part of your your income is down the toilet. And you've honestly, we're with you. The The silent majority is backing you. Once they actually understand, we need to educate them. So I would love uh, if any of you guys who are farmers that can break it down exactly um, and maybe if there's a farmer and you've got a farmer I'll come down and I'll interview you we'll go and look at what you do and you can break it down for the people so that everybody understands because the way the media is trying to paint you is not the way it is so if there's anything I can do I know there's other good people I was amazed to see uh, Jeff buys cars there um, man, <laughs> my wife said, you pretty, he'll think you're stalking him. And I was like, no, I'm not stalking him. But he has got a really lovely sofa. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was surprised um, to see a lot. There was actually quite a few people uh, there that I, it was good to see. It was good to see. And there were there were actually people from different sides of politics as well that were actually unified in this as well, which they won't tell you on the news. They really won't tell you that, but there was. There were some people uh, there. There was also, I saw some guys who were um, at the protest uh, and they were talking about their communism and that they're pro-communist. And yeah, they were there giving their thoughts and hey, there was no having a go, no nastiness. I thought, yeah, fine. Everybody was there and it was peaceful. So don't listen to what it says in the news because it was a load of old waffle. And as for the tractors, they held them all up on the motorway um, so that basically you couldn't, they, those tractors couldn't get there. Three, I caught three sneaking through, you naughty boys. Um, but uh, yeah, I think even the, the response, it reminded me of Canada we, how much they or how frightened the Canadians were when those trucks rolled in, and honestly, he he was he smegged off to blooming Brussels, and then <laughs> and then basically got the police out in force. I saw eight police vehicles. Uh, I was filmed. I was filmed uh, twice, literally by. Uh, the police CCTV, which is fine. I, I have no problem with that because I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm here to sort of tell the truth of what's actually happening. Um, and there was loads and loads of police, massive barricades put up. And there was barely anybody in Cardiff because it was absolutely chucking it down. What's really interesting as well is because the Cardiff, uh, you know, parliament and those politicians are really obviously massively concerned about the environment and I walked through from one side of the town to the other so and I have never seen so much litter and trash and just general rubbish all over the place it's it, I mean there were all these uh, container buildings they looked like they've been they were lovely I mean if they were in some places in London they'd probably be a fortune they were like squalid you could see inside they were disgusted litter everywhere there was a whole football ground completely overrun uh with grass litter there were seagulls picking through the rubbish i was like this place is a dump i'm sorry it needs a really really good clean and those politicians you need to be looking after that city get it get it good for the people that's that's who you're meant to be serving. Anyway, I'm just going off on another rant now. But the farmers, you guys, keep going. Don't give up. Never quit. Refuse to quit. And keep going. And stay united. Because if you're united, they can't do anything.